everybody? My name is Tyler and I'm here to welcome you to our training preview and program overview. By working with us at Auto Remote Direct and bringing the smart box into your location, your customers can expect to save an average of 50% compared to competition on keys and remotes. Best of all, now your service department can provide those same keys and remotes for over 90% of vehicles, not just the ones you specialize in. With an easy to navigate website and step-by-step -step instructions provided by the smart box, the money-making potential makes this program a no-brainer. Normally, this training would take about 45 minutes, but today we'll just cover the core concepts. That's navigating the website, identifying the correct key or remote for your customer, programming using the smart box, and cutting a high security key with our Condor Mini automated cutter. But enough of the formalities, I'm gonna get out of the way so that we can see how this all works. When you log on to the Auto Remote Direct website, finding the correct product starts with the make, model, and year. For this example, let's look for a Nissan Altima 2018 using the drop down menus. Now we see all available products for this vehicle. In this case, we have two possible options. And to determine the correct one, we'll implement a simple three-step process, the rule of three. You can see the steps in this big red banner off to the side. Starting with the first step, we want to make sure our customer's remote has the same FCC ID that's listed for the product. As you can see, both remotes have the same FCC ID here, so both could be correct. We're on the right track, but to narrow it down even further, we'll move on to step two, the details. Clicking on the product image will take us to the product details, where we can check out all the important info, such as button options, frequency, and additional notes. Once we've confirmed this is the correct remote, we can move on to the third and final step, the widget. That's the blue circle in the top right of the picture. Clicking it will launch a pop-up that provides us with important programming notes. This vehicle requires that all keys are present at the time of programming since existing keys and remotes will be deleted and must be reprogrammed during the process. Just make sure your customer brings in all of their remotes when you see this note and you'll be fine. We also see the complexity meter and estimated time to program, so we have an idea of what to expect. And there's also tabs at the top with short videos demonstrating programming for that vehicle. Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to program a 2016 Toyota Corolla using our smart box device. And in order to do that, all we have to do is plug this in to the OBD port down between the steering wheel and the pedals. After we've done that, we can launch our app and log in using our PIN code. From this next screen, the main menu, we'll have a few different options, but we're out here to program, so we'll choose programming in the top left. And the next screen asks us to verify the make, model, and year, so we'll re-input that. Scroll down to Toyota, Corolla, 2016, and we'll submit. And this next screen gives us a lot of important programming notes, and normally we would have an opportunity to read those before we get to this position. So for today, let's assume we've already done that, and let's skip past to the next screen and continue to our programming options. And on this screen, it gives us a few different categories for all the different types of keys and remotes that may be available for this vehicle. So we see transponder, we see remote, we see proximity. And since we are programming a proximity remote for a touch or a push to start vehicle, we will hit fob and proximity remote programming. And on this new screen, we have two options, one for remote and one for proximity. Like I said, we're programming a proximity remote, so we'll choose that option. And then it's going to load the programming steps, and this very first step tells us not to disconnect the OBD or USB cable until programming is complete. And in this case, we also need to turn the emergency lights on. So we'll do that, and then we'll hit continue. And this next screen, again, we have a few options, but we're trying to program a keyless, and that's the option number one, so we'll choose that. And at this point, it is going to give us each step, step by step. 
So all we have to do is take our time, read it carefully, understand what we're about to do, and then proceed with the step. So this says, place a currently programmed keyless remote right here in front of the start button. Do not press and wait for the vehicle to beep one time. I don't know if you heard it, it's very faint, but it did beep, so we can hit continue. And on the next screen, we have our next step. Place your new keyless remote in front of the start button and wait for the vehicle to beep two times. So instead of once, it will beep twice. And again, very faint, but it beeped twice, so we can hit continue now. It'll configure, and then programming successful. And that's all there is to it. So we can hit complete, we'll back out of our menu, and then it's going to ask us if we're done programming. So we'll say yes, and we'll give it five stars because it was quick and easy. And though every vehicle is a little different, most of them will just be a few steps, just like this one. And as you can see, now our new remote works. So our customer is ready to go on their way with their new key or new remote. So that's it, everybody programming a 2016 Toyota Corolla. I hope you learned something and enjoyed yourself. And of course, best of luck in your programming endeavors.